Okay, so I had some students that had questions on this all problem 19.1. So I'm going to solve 19.1a here using both the graphical method like the problem says and another method that's a little bit quicker. I'll use Excel if I have time here. Okay, so I set this up in advance to, to give us a little bit more time. You can see I put z here and 4 and 3 are the constants and x1 and x2 is above. And then I put 6 and 4 right here with material and then labor is 4 and 8 okay, and I have the 48 and 80 here with the less than or equal to here x1 and x2 is greater than 0 I have that here so I have all the information this is what I want to maximize right here so I have that so I have all the information given here I have it set up here okay so you can look at that pause the video if you want to and look at how I set it up and then go ahead and set yours up that way okay so I'm going to move this out of the way now. Uh, so let's do the graphical method first. So to do the graphical method, we have to find the intercepts. And I'm going to start with material. And um, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it down here. Here, let me do this with equals this or so I just want 48 here and here all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and copy these uh, let me do it this way equals this uh, I better to copy because it keeps the formatting okay so the way simply the way we do the intercepts is we say if this x1 is 0 then I'm sorry, it's up to 4x2 is 48. So if this is 0, then x2 times what equals 48? Well, you know it's 12. But if you do it with Excel, you can just say it equals this divided by that, right? So 12 times 4 is 48. And then we can see if this is 0, so, so this is 0 here, then 6 times what equals 48? Well, that's going to be simply equal to 48 divided by 6. Okay? And then, then we can do the labor. We can do the same thing. So this is equal to 80, right? And um, so you can see if this is 0, then 8 times what equals 80? Well, this is, this is going to be equal to 80 divided by 8. So 10 times 8 is equal to 80. Okay, and then we go if this is 0. We say this equals 80 divided by 4. Okay, so those are my intercepts. Um, so, how do we graph these so we can take a look at them? Well, so what I try to do is I, I'm going to say x1, I'm going to graph it as x1 is my horizontal axis and x2 is my vertical axis or my y. Okay, so I could highlight these and I can go insert, scatter. Like that. And did that come out right? Is eight is x eight? No, it's not x. So I have to swap backwards. So what I could do is I could go here to switch bone column. And now it's showing that x is eight, y is zero, right? And so now I've got now I've got to graph the way I want. So now what I can do, I can uh, I can modify this a little bit. I can go up here to uh, click on this and I want to go to select data and it has series one that's the series but I want to go ahead and name the series so I'm going to go here and go to edit and for series name I'm going to put material and go okay and okay and now I have the material I'm going to delete this I'm going to highlight this and go delete because we don't really need that so I know that this line is my material and do that now. I want to add in the labor graph, so I'm going to go select that. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to go add the series name is labor, and the x values. Remember, this is the horizontal axis, so it'd be these two. And here, you're going to be careful. You're going to make sure you delete this. Don't just highlight it, but just delete it, and then highlight the y values here, and go okay, and okay. So that was very easy, right? It looks hard in the book, but it's not that hard. So now what we have 
as we have everything graphed. We found our intercepts, we were able to graph it very quickly. And now we have to look at these arrows to see which way we're going to shade it. Since, since x1 and x2 are greater than zero, that simply means that this is the bound. The first quadrant is a bound, okay? So it's not going to go below this axis and not going to go to the left of this axis. It's going to go that way and that way. Okay, so that's the lower bound of my feasible region. So I could look at the material. So the material has a left arrow here, right? So that means, now this is, I do this something very simple. That means I'm going to shade this to the left. So the material is in blue, so I would look at this line and I would shade everything in this area to the left all the way around this triangle. Picture it like a light gray, okay? And then labor is also to the left, so I take this line, which is a red line, and I shade that all light gray. So this triangle shaded light gray and this triangle shaded light gray. So the darker gray would be where it's double shaded, so it would be from 0, 0 to 0, 10 to whatever this point is here to uh, 8, 0. So there would be four corner points inside my feasible region. This is my feasible region. Okay. So the thing is, we need to find this corner point because we don't know this one. We, we have to find where, where x1 and x2 are equal on both of these equations, on both of these two equations. So I would use these as equal signs and I'd say, okay, where, where is x1 and x2 the same? Because both these lines, are, x1 and x2 is the same for both of these lines. Okay, so I'm going to do it a real quick way. It might not make a lot of sense to you, but uh, let me copy this. So I'm going to go copy. And I'm going to highlight here. And I'm going to go equals transpose. Uh, and I'm going to highlight these two. And close it and I'm gonna go control shift enter. Oh, that didn't work. So I'm gonna highlight these two. I'm gonna go equals trans. Probably spell transpose wrong. I'm gonna highlight these two. I'm gonna close it and control shift enter. Okay. So that's my well, you know, I'm gonna do it an easier way. Let's just do it this way. I'm gonna copy these and I'm gonna right click. I'm going to go paste transpose. Okay, so I want my answer to be right here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to, in order to solve this real quickly, I'm going to use matrix algebra. This might not make a lot of sense to you, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So it equals to the M matrix multiply. And we're going matrix inverse. And I want to take the inverse of these two right here that I have. Um, so that's my constants on my equation, the numbers in front of the variables, and then I'm going to multiply them times this constant matrix. Okay. And then now here's where you got to be careful. Don't hit enter. You've got to hold down control shift and hit enter. So my counter points are 2 and 9. And that makes sense because this is about 2 and that's about 9. Okay. So now I'm going to put in my corner points. So my corner points uh, let me copy this. My corner points are equal to 2 and 9, right? Because that's that one, that's that point. Also 0 and 0, that's that point. What point is this? So this is 8 and 0, right? And then this one is 0, 10. And so those are my four points that bound my feasible region. Okay. And I want to maximize. I want to find Z. Okay. So I'm going to do this again uh, using matrix algebra because it's a little bit quicker. This is kind of a neat little trick. So I'm going to go equal to um, M multiply. I'm going to take these times the, the transpose of my objective function, and then I'm going to hit Control Shift Enter, and it gives me my my z's values. Okay, and which one's the maximum? The maximum's right here, so that's my answer. Okay, um, so this point here is the one that maximizes this value. So two times four plus three times nine equals thirty-five, and that's I don't know those four points. That's the maximum value. Now there's another way we could do this. I could take uh, 
So this is a really actually the easiest way to do it. So I'll go alternate. Um, what we could do is we could take, uh, I'm going to take these down here. You have to set it up properly. So I'm going to put these here. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it right below. And for right now, we don't know. We don't know these two, so I'm just going to guess this is one and this is one. I don't know it. Okay. So these are where my answers are. And then what I have to do, so you can just watch how I set this up. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to go okay, I'm multiply. And when we want to multiply, we want to multiply uh, these numbers. Okay. I forgot the equal sign, I'm sorry. So this equals m multiply. So you're going to multiply these numbers here that we set up. Okay, and that's going to be times the transpose. of these numbers and I hit control shift enter oh shoot I forgot to hide it I had control Z let me do it again highlight up where you want your answer so it equals to M multiply these numbers times the transpose of these numbers Two, two parentheses and control shift enter. So, so now I have it set up and now we're going to go to data and we're going to go to solver. If you don't have solver in your computer, computer if, you don't, if it doesn't show solver here, you have to go into file and then options and then add-ins right here and then you're going to go to Excel add-ins you got to make sure the solver is checked and then go OK. And then solver up here, up here. And then we'll click on solver. And we want to set objective. Well, I want to set this because that's my Z and I want to maximize it. So I'm going to click maximize by changing these two variables. I want to change these variables and find out what the maximum this is. And then I'm, I'm going to get rid of these constraints. This is from a previous problem. So now I want to add some constraints. So I'm going to add, I'm going to say this is less than or equal to 48. I'm going to go add. Then I'm going to say this, the labor is less than or equal to 80. I'm going to go, and I'm going to go OK. So now I have those two constraints. It shows that this has got to be less than or equal to 48 and this has to be less than or equal to 80. Now the other constraint x1 and x2 is equal to 0 you're going to say you're going to click this right here it says make unconstrained variables non-negative. So in other words that forces these to be and then you want to make sure this is on simplex. All right and then you're just going to go solve and we're just going to go okay and you go down, that was 1-1 one, one before, I just changed it to 2-9, so that was our answer. And what is the value? 35. Okay, so let's maximize the 35. And that's how you do it.